Here we are with Robert Sherrod. He's a managing director at Crescofin, a Swiss regulated crypto firm uh, which wants to become a bank alternative and replace banking with code. So, Robert, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to have you in the Defined podcast. Hi, Camilla. It's great to be here. Awesome. So, okay. So you have a lot going on at Cresco Firm, uh, Cresco Fin, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. You first became, um, you became the first regulated uh, cryptocurrency company to issue um, a tokenized equity recently. That's right. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. It's quite an experience. You know, I tell you coming from really traditional finance, like it's a baptism of fire in crypto, but I really love it. We've, we've developed a little bit of a community of believers. Yeah, so obviously, you know, really excited to get in, into that, but um, as always, before, before we do, I wanna know more about you. Um, what's your background and how did you get into crypto? Well, I got, it, I got into it in an interesting way. You know, when I was in my mid 20s, Uh, I had just finished business school and I was interested in emerging markets uh, valuation. So I worked for an investment bank and I ended up a long way from home, like a long way from growing up in Canada. Uh, I ended up in Moscow, Russia, wow. and we were making, we were making a loan to like a Russian company. And this is a, this is a long time ago. And I, I saw with my own eyes, what, what many people in the crypto community, you know, decry, which is, mm -hmm the creation of money. So like I was this young banker, we're making this loan and like, say the, say the bank in Russia had like, you know, about five in its treasury. Well, we were making a loan for a hundred and I kept going around saying like, where does this money come from? Like, do we send it from headquarters in London? Does it go through the Russian central bank? And, and finally the treasurer, you know, pulled me aside and he's like, look, Robert, I, I create like a loan account for like a hundred and that's our asset. And then I, I type in like a hundred into the deposit account and then the borrower can access that. And I was just shocked. Like, I wow. mean, it's like, that's where money comes from. Right. I, I just like, uh, and so fast forward, like a number of years, I found, I found Bitcoin because I, I kept asking myself, like, what is money? Like, it just kind of shook me, you know, that like, <laughs> some guy could just create it in a you know computer digital entry and then when i found bitcoin i said to myself well okay n now i know what what money is so <laughs> that was kind of the start of my crypto journey i guess and throughout all that time since kind of your first loan deal in moscow uh till finding finding bitcoin were you um always kind of in involved in in banking Yeah. So my background is my background is a traditional banker. You know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get over it. I'm taking pills and shots <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, get out of it. You know, I'm restituting, you know, myself to the world by creating uh, Crasco. So yeah, I was, uh, my background was in investment banking. I did, mm -hmm. I did mergers and acquisitions for most of my career. And then I did private equity and that was mainly in London, mm -hmm. but I worked in, I worked in Russia. I worked in um, Hong Kong. Uh, I did a lot of emerging market stuff, and then I did developed market stuff, and then I moved to Switzerland, so where I live now. Nice. Okay, and then, so how did you find Bitcoin, and, and what led you to Switzerland specifically? Well, I was, in, I was in Switzerland, and I've always liked technology, and I was doing a little tech startup, and a younger guy in my team, like, came to me, and he's like, and this was like, You know, this was in like late 2017 or 18 when mm. when Bitcoin was like at its last all time highs. Right. Mm -hmm. Which we've just amazingly blown past in the, yeah. in the last few days. Just really cool. But at the at the previous all time high, this young guy is trying to sell me on like getting involved in this cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And like everybody, I think my first reaction is, is like th that's it sounds like a scam. Like it mm -hmm. seems scammy. It doesn't seem real. And then I reminded myself, like, no, 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 wait, like traditional finance is a scam. <laughs> I should, you know, I of all people know that, like I've seen it. So mm -hmm. I looked into it a bit more and I was, you know, like many people blown away by it. I mean, it's more than just the most honest form of money we've ever had. Like it opens up the whole philosophical aspect of controlling your own destiny, 
of, you know, of not being taken advantage of essentially by banks and central banks. And, and, and I actually ended up writing a, a book about it. I, I ended up writing a book, it's called 1%. And it's about how fractional reserve banking essentially channels, you know, wealth to the, to the 1% from, mm. from the rest of us. So it, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was really interesting. Cause I, you know, as a young guy kind of sitting on some park bench in Moscow, like asking myself, what is money? And, you know, thinking of maybe getting my money back for my undergraduate degree, because I'd obviously been lied to, to mm -hmm. finding Bitcoin. I was really like, it, it was incredible eye opening experience for me. Wow, what a journey. I'd love to um, hear more about this kind of thesis of uh, fractional reserve banking, funneling money to the 1%, if you can kind of briefly explain that and also compare it to how uh, Bitcoin and, and crypto isn't that. Well, you and I kind of had similar experiences, right? Because I, I think I remember from your really cool book that you were in Argentina at a mm -hmm. time when there was a crisis and you saw also like firsthand, like the declining value of money and then the state putting a limit on, because I think you were getting your salary, you know, in, uh, out of the country and like into hard currency and then they stopped it, right? Yeah, that's right. And so, I, Camilla, my, my view is, is that you really only understand money if you see it raw. Like you mm -hmm. have to see it, like you, if you live in like New York, London, Geneva, you know, you, you don't think deeply about money because you're not mm -hmm. pushed to do it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a strange group of people, right? Like, like cypherpunks, right? And the, you know, the Bitcoiners now who like, really deeply think about it. And I think if you stopped many people on the street and forced them, you know, for half an hour to stop and think about money, that they'd probably come to the same conclusion. But, you, you know, for me, it was, uh, for me, it was like really getting deep into fractional reserve banking, how it works. It's, it's fundamentally dishonest, Camilla. It's, ba it's like an inverted house of cards. And, and at the bottom is the fractional reserve. And it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's dangerous for the economy. And I think it's very unhealthy for people. I mean, anything that is, you know, anything that's fundamentally based on an untruth isn't very good. I mean, the bank tells you it's your money and it's here in the bank when you want it. And actually legally it becomes the bank's money and it's not there when you want it. I think people have, you know, I think people have this like Ocean's Eleven view of their money in the bank. And they think that somebody goes and stacks their you know, stacks their dollar bills in some giant, you know, you know, cast iron safe at the back and they close the door and lock it away there. And, and actually it's just, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's the opposite of Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin is premised on no double spend and fractional reserve banking is entirely based on double spend. Well, more than double spend actually, but so it channels money, essentially it channels money, essentially to people who have access to the banking system because it's mm -hmm. a god it's a godlike power that mm -hmm. banks have that they, they can create money essentially out of nothing it, it's it's not matching savings to productive uses in the real economy it's it's genuinely banks can and do create money i mean uh, i was you know i'm kind of a nerd and i was i was reading the bank of england a quarterly journal from 2014 and in that in that journal the bank of england admits that like not admits but they state that like 97 percent of of money created in the economy is is created by commercial banks it's like so anyway that's that's my view and so my solution is bitcoin and also uh cresco which we've created which essentially is matched funding not fractional reserve um, wow, no, that, that's so interesting. And um, I mean, it, it's, it is crazy that banks can really create money out of thin air. You know, I, I believe I have like, a, I guess, a, a, a little bit of a more like less, um, I don't know, I don't want to say radical, but I, I do believe kind of uh, banks 
can can fuel growth by creating that uh, that money and like channeling uh, loans and like investment to places that need it. But I agree that it's only kind of a small percentage of people who have access to to that uh, financing uh, and not necessarily those who actually need it the most. So definitely. Well, there's no, there's no, there's no question that banks are very beneficial for the economy. And, and the vast majority of people who work in banks are, are very good people. I mean, it's just the, it's a, it's a, it's a deception that hides in plain sight and there's a better solution for it, but it was only recently that, you know, that humanity could actually tap into it. And that's the blockchain, which essentially allows like no double spend. It allows you to trust somebody, even if you don't know them. So it allows this decentralized way of, of essentially operating an economy that, that didn't, that didn't exist beforehand. But there's no question that many of the functions of banks are are incredibly valuable, and a lot of it is channeling, you know, savings into productive use. It, it's just that the way it was originally developed was essentially it, it evolved out of um, precious metals guilds, and the guilds just worked out that, like, you know, not everybody came back the next day to get their gold back, so you could write IOUs against it, and it, it it's it's just it's it's an old mo- it's an old model i mean in my view it will be disrupted by uh by crypto so. oh yeah definitely um for sure it, it's only a matter of time i i think um okay so with with this discovery of of bitcoin of actual uh money um how, how did that lead to you uh, founding cresco well you know so there's been a war on savers that's gone on for at least the last decade, and that is going to continue for the foreseeable future. So, you know, my my partner is like my oldest friend from growing up in a small town in Canada. And we were both like, you know, we're both sitting around just kind of, you know, bemoaning the fact that, you know, our savings don't work very hard for us in the bank, and they really kind of work for the bank. And central banks essentially distort the economy so that as a saver, you don't get very much for your money. And we thought, well, what can we do as an alternative? And, you know, we're not crypto native, but we're both, you know, we're both into technology. And so we came up with this idea of matched funding uh, using blockchain. And so our idea was to cut out the bank and essentially tie our own savings into the real economy. And that's what we did. So we actually didn't start out to create a business. We we actually just started out because we were kind of pissed off at like at, at not getting very much in the bank. It's a good way to start a business, though. You know, you start it for yourself because you're annoyed. It's some you know something irritates you. So that's how we that's how we created it. And then you know w- you know people would ask us like, well, what do you do? And you know, I'd be in Switzerland. I'd be like, well. I'm, you know, I'm trying to make my money work harder for me. And other people would be like, okay, well, I, I kind of like that idea too. And maybe I'll be part of this. And so we had built the software. We, we had tested it, tested it with our own money. We didn't take any VC funding. There's no kind of these pre-sales or whatever, because we were just doing it for ourselves. And, you know, as more people got interested in the idea because you you don't get very much for your money in the bank. I mean, in Switzerland, actually, if you're, you know, for institutions, actually, you, you have to pay to have it in the bank. So some people came to us and were interested, but then their next thought was, is, you know, would I trust you with my money? And that actually led to, you know, a thought piece that you were kind enough to publish for me, which, which I wrote in the Defiant back in, uh, back in August, which is, you know, which is why are banks still around? Because most people don't like their bank. Most people, I think, statistically prefer to go to the dentist rather than going to the bank. And as long ago as 1994, Bill Gates said, you know, that banks are dinosaurs. But you know, that was and that was the article that I wrote, right? I mean, they're dinosaurs. You know, maybe they're dinosaurs, but they're not extinct. They're, you know, they're they're very healthy. And so, our our solution essentially was is to um, was to involve insurance. So our model is now matched funding plus blockchain plus insurance. And insurance essentially negates a bank's psychological advantage, which is that your money is really safe in the bank. I, I mean, people don't bank with tech companies, right? You 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 don't have your salary paid into 
some Google account or Apple account or some, you know, there's, there's fintechs have done an amazing job of improving the existing system, but a lot of it is, you know, nibbling around the edges. So it's, it's amazing what, you know, fintechs have done, but to challenge core deposit banking you need to address this you need to address this main issue which is which is the feeling of safety and so we do that you know through insurance and out of that kind of came kind of came cresco and then more you know more and more people got interested in it we started testing it with other people's money here in switzerland in addition to yeah in addition to our own great uh, very cool. So can we um, backtrack a little bit and can you dive more deeply into kind of these two key, key pieces of match funding and insurance? Uh, like what exactly do you mean by match funding? And is this like actual um, like Swiss francs or, or euros or is it crypto? And, um, and how are you insuring these uh, deposits? So yeah, it's a good it's a good question, and, and it all starts in the real economy. I mean, we're built on a blockchain tech stack. So in our view, like for finance, there's two tech stacks. There's the old legacy tech stack, and then there's blockchain. Now our view is that blockchain will totally replace the you know the legacy tech stack uh, eventually. So uh, our idea was just simply to make our money work harder for us. That that was the idea. So we thought, well, we'll do what banks do. We'll just cut out the bank, and so. How do banks make their money? Well, they make it by lending. And then we stopped and thought, well, we don't really want to lend money because it's just a paper promise to repay. I mean, we we definitely wanted to we wanted to build on on blockchain in, in crypto. And I mean, anybody who's thinking of a new banking model today, I mean, any thinking person will go right to crypto once you really look at it. So we thought rather than lending, what if we can own, like physically own an asset? And so wh what we do is we essentially, we essentially transform paper contracts into smart contracts. So every business relationship starts with a seller selling something to a buyer. And so it's all a, uh, it's all a contract. And what, what we do is we insist that the seller and the buyer uh, both agree that the contract is essentially registered on chain. And so when the seller delivers something, we have our mechanism is called proof of delivery because the big issue with contracts, there's two of them. One is, is has the seller properly delivered and will the buyer pay for it? And so that's at the top of every every single business relationship. And so uh, you know, below that is, is like, debt and equity and you can carve it up different ways. And we thought, forget it, like we'll apply this crypto idea of smart contracts. And once it's delivered and both parties agree, whatever's written to chain is the truth. And so it's delivered. And then the obligation is just on the buyer to pay. So we actually buy that invoice, which we create ourselves. So it cuts out disputes. It cuts out fraud because it's, it's from our software, essentially, that this, this contract obligation, the payment obligation uh, exists. And so we buy it at a discount. Seller gets the money right away. We're, we're, we're cutting out the bank. So they get a better deal than they would get from borrowing elsewhere. And then we wait for the buyer to pay us in like, you know, 30 days, for example. And if the buyer doesn't pay us, uh, we have insurance. So if, if the buyer doesn't pay, uh, Lloyd's Insurance in London pays. So, we, but it's amazing, Camilla, that by doing that, cutting out the bank, and just going to like you know a very typical relationship in the real economy, you you know you you get you get an asset that you can insure, and you can make a lot you can make a you know you you get a lot more than you get paid in the bank. So we we, we offer that for three percent in U.S. dollars, and it's a hundred percent insured, whether you put you know like a hundred dollars with us or like a hundred million dollars. So. That's the different model. That's the that's the matched model that I, I spent a lot of my life. I mean, I'm a pretty boring guy. I spent a lot of my life thinking about fractional reserve banking and how it could be better and better for the economy and better for society. And so this is this is our this is our solution. Um, very cool. Okay, so in that model, who exactly are the buyers and sellers? Like, where are you getting these invoices from? 
Well, you can get it from you can get it from any relationship in the in the real economy. We, we because we're very conservative, we only deal with large corporates, and so mm-hmm. typically they're investment grade. So the buyers are all investment grade. The smaller guys are suppliers to them. So we do, for example, suppliers to supermarket chains here in Switzerland. Uh, we do staffing. So like a contract employee works for, you know, eight hours a day. At the end of that, the you know, the employee and the supervisor sign that that they work for eight hours a day, and that is essentially uh, recorded to chain. So that's our proof of delivery. So you can't come back later and say, oh, I don't remember if that, you can't dispute it, basically. Our model is, is that with proof of delivery, you, <laughs> you, you can't dispute it later, because that's where that's where so many problems arise in the real economy, because you've got two different databases, one for the seller, one for the buyer, and they don't talk to each other. But if everybody agrees on using you know, one database, which is obviously the blockchain, then that cuts out those possibilities. And you know, Switzerland's, a great, Switzerland's a great place for the business. One is because regulation's very clear, two, because there's, you know, there's a lot of money here, and the the third is, is that there's a, a huge number of supply chains go through go through Switzerland. So half the I mean it's a funny statistic, but like half the world's coffee flows through you know Switzerland. Half the sugar, thirty five percent of oil. I mean it's just like the, there's enormous supply chain. There's enormous supply chains here because Switzerland's a pretty safe and stable country, and there's you know there's some tax advantages. So yeah, so we we tap into some big markets. I mean, we're, we're attacking the core deposit banking market on one side, which is a $60 trillion market. It's just enormous. And then supply chains are like, you know, 7 trillion and then staffing is, is like half a trillion. And so it's, it's big. Wow. Um, so how much in deposits are you handling right now? So at the moment, at the moment, we're just, te- at the moment, we're just testing it. So we've mm-hmm. been testing it. So my partner and I started in on the 1st of October 2019 with our own money. So mm-hmm. we had built our systems out by then. We got it regulated. We hired, we hired people. In May of 2020, we opened to some selected institutions. So, and the early adopters have been family offices. So um, who because you know, as principals, they're really affected by very, very low rates and they're a little bit more forward thinking about crypto really helpful for us was, you know, we saw a real, you know, increase in interest in the spring after uh, Paul Tudor Jones said that he was holding crypto or Bitcoin in his, in his portfolio. So um, we, we haven't announced, well, we haven't said the exact amounts they're holding, but we're, we're holding this, we're holding a fairly substantial amount. It's not, it's not on chain. It's all, it's all off chain. Uh, we're going to move to um, on-chain. We have an on-chain offer coming up uh, next year, which mm-hmm. we're which we're really excited about. But yeah, we've been test. It it depends from the crypto perspective. We have like a you know an okay amount of money that's uh, deposited with us from kind of a Swiss deposit perspective. We <laughs> we don't have very much because there's mm-hmm. there's so much here. So but you got to right. start. You got to start somewhere. Of course. Um, okay, so let me see if, if I understand the, how, how this works. So, okay, so you get um, investors to deposit or like family offices, funds uh, to deposit money uh, with you. Um, and then you get um, like these two sides of, of the coin, like buyers and sellers uh, to, to access those funds. Um, so uh, the, um, the the sellers of, of a product will will be able to get kind of a, a secure cash flow from from those deposits uh, that uh, investors are making uh, to to Cresco, um, and and in in return you're getting kind of the um, the other side of 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 the, the that, that invoice right um, and getting kind of that uh, that. Uh, Cash from there, yeah. It all because it all start. It all starts with the smart contract, and so mm-hmm. uh, the sellers essentially are the sellers are essentially delivering something to the buyer. They want to be paid, and we, we arrange everything in advance. So what we do is we get insurance against the buyer not paying, and that's that's all arranged in advance. It's it's basically it's what the banks do, except it's not lending. I mean, it's uh, it's it's secured. So the mm-hmm. sellers so. 
Yeah. So the sellers get the sellers get some financing and they get it right away as soon as delivery is completely confirmed. Mm -hmm. And then we wait a certain amount of time and the uh, essentially the invoice that we bought at maybe like our own invoice that we create ourselves. We, we buy it at 95. It like pays back at 100. And that pays the interest to the depositors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Derek and I started with this ourselves. So we started testing this with like, you know, single digit millions of our of our own money. And it worked, you know, it worked pretty well. And we haven't, you know, there was a few early bugs in the software, but we've worked it out. And, but there's never been any issue with like the credit side of things. So we've invited others to come into it. So when you, when you put money, if you're, you know, I mean, at the moment, it's just Swiss institutions, but if mm -hmm. you're, if you put like your, if you put like 10 million, you know, euros with us, essentially it's matched to an asset. So you don't take any you don't you don't take any risk against Cresco because we act as a fiduciary. Simply, you just buy the you buy these assets, and the assets pay back such that you get a you you get an insured um, you get an insured return. And right. in yeah, so that's so, so you buy these invoices basically yeah. at a discount, and then when when those invoices are are, are paid back, you get that kind of um, difference, right? You get the interest. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. officially, it's not officially it's not interest. I mean, it is it is essentially seen by everybody as interest, but you know, technically, it's it's an increase in an asset in an asset right. value. So, but the nice thing is, is as a depositor, you're not taking risk against us, and you're not taking just a promise to repay risk. W mm -hmm. What you've got essentially is you've got an asset, you've got a, a legal asset that's uh, that's due to you, and if the buyer who who are all major companies if they were in in some cases not to repay i mean lloyd's insurance pays so mm. yeah so that's the idea and it's really only possible mm -hmm. it's really only possible if you can do this on the blockchain because you know it's like you know the proof of delivery is recorded to chain so you you can't have a dispute afterwards you can't say well i didn't receive it or i don't agree to it it's like the smart contract is that the the seller and the buyer both you know, both, you know, have agreed that what is written to chain is the truth. So it, it cuts out the, it cuts out the biggest problem in the real world, which is disputes between sellers and buyers. So how, how does this proof of delivery work? Is, is it kind of just like delivery of, of cash and that's verified on chain? No, it's like, you think of it like, um, to be very Swiss, uh, think of it as like somebody who's selling chocolate to, mm -hmm. you know, the major supermarket. So essentially is a question like, has the chocolate been delivered? So oh, okay. every week, every week you send chocolate to, you know, Migros or, or whatever, the supermarket chains mm -hmm. here. And so what, what happens is, is that the proof of that delivery is recorded on chain. So some, so the seller and the buyer, as delivery happens, they essentially record that, that process that it's, mm -hmm. Uh, that it's on chain and the smart contract has like any contract it has volume times price so the certain amount of chocolate times the price of the chocolate equals this is this is how much is this is how much is owed and it's mm -hmm. owed it, it's owed in 30 days it, it's not a question of you know the chocolate supplier creating their own invoice and send and sending it to the supermarket chain and saying mm -hmm you know, this is my view of how much was delivered and the price. It, it, it's, it's all captured in that, it's all captured in that smart contract. Okay. So the smart contract becomes kind of the, the one source of truth for both parties. And, uh, but they, they both still need to kind of trust each other, right? Like you need to trust the supermarket that they're in, in, like they're inputting the right uh, information and and the supermarket needs to trust the like chocolate supplier that they are doing the same. Well, there's always a bit of trust. It, there's always a bit of trust in anything. I mean, you know, crypto is the the idea is totally trustless. But mm -hmm. this is as trustless as you can get, I think, because mm -hmm. you know, both parties pre-agree that the smart contract like you like you just said is the source of a source of truth. Like what's recorded to chain from that contract is the is the real source of truth so you can't come back later and say i didn't agree that price for mm -hmm. chocolate or whatever do you know what I mean because you've pre-agreed it and you've pre-agreed that like you know when i sign to receive the chocolate like i've inspected it i agree there's there's all these processes right so mm -hmm. at like whatever the 
warehouse door or whatever. Like it's checked, it's agreed, it is what it is. Uh, I accept it. You you sign it. You like hash it essentially, and it's it's recorded. So. Mm. You, you know, the, the, a lot of the trust part is taken away, but you've put your finger on it, Camilla. The, the, the biggest point is, is that it's shared. Mm. I mean, this is, where, this is where I think it's like, this is where I think crypto will replace so many old black box SQL databases, which is that we've got a shared ledger now. And, mm. and that is the state of truth. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and right now, this is all done with with like fiat uh, currencies. Is is the plan to like add crypto? In the yeah. Future? So, yeah. Exactly. So you know, you know, Derek and I just started thinking like you know we would do this ourselves. We'd make more money on our own savings. I mean, you know, it's it's very simple. To, to be honest, it's a very simple kind of boring business. I'm a boring guy. <laughs> it's like you know, it's an insured savings account. It's an alternative to a bank account. It's not yield farming. You know, you're not farming yams. It's like, you know, you're not going to make a thousand X on it. It's like, you know, the point is it's for, it's designed for mass adoption. It's designed to like bring people into crypto as well. I mean, you know, I mean, because it's, you know, it's enabled essentially by, by the blockchain. You can do it in our three different currencies in, in fiat. Um, but yes, of course, like we're, we're definitely going to do it in stable coins. So we're, We're trying to develop um, a USD stablecoin, you know, alternative, which is going to be in USDC or DAI or both. And we're working on we're working on that now. So that's one of the things we what we re, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to roll this out globally for individuals. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in South America or you're in Europe or Asia, you know, whether you're an individual or an institution. You, you, everybody can make their money work harder for them. I mean, anybody can essentially send in money and have like essentially a savings account with a, a Swiss regulated company. And it's, you know, enabled by blockchain and you can make like, you know, 3% in dollars. So we're, we're working on that. We're going to release some of our product look uh, and feel next week. It's just the, the oh, last, cool. like the, the last, like, you know, I would say like two months have been me trying to figure out like listing our equity, our, our, you know, our shares as, as equity. It's been like a real, it's been a real, you know, it's been a real education process. So mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to, we're definitely gonna do that in stable coins. We're, we're really excited as well. We've got a, we've got a proposal in the Ave governance forum uh, to build on top of, uh, to create a money market basically on, on Ave, which is mm -hmm. one of my favorite like DeFi projects. And it's just like, it, it's such an, it's such an incredible, like, you know, permissionless, like money market system, I, I think it will really change like traditional money markets. So we're going to try and build like a money market on Aave for our insured collateral. That's, oh, that's wow. one of the things that we're doing in, in crypto. I mean, we're now we're now we're fully in love with 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 crypto. We did it initially just to try and just because we were irritated with the bank. <laughs> and that leads you to crypto. But I think like our idea for mass adoption is, is that w once you you know, once you try crypto, you, you know, you're, you're just enamored by it. So. Yeah. Um, I agree. Okay. So, so let me go, go back to the different pieces you mentioned. Um, first is, which we didn't uh, kind of uh, finish covering is insurance fees, which how, um, so, so first, like by which insurance company are you insured? And, and did they have like any, any trouble getting past the fact that you're using smart contracts or did that not, not really kind of become part of the conversation yeah it was definitely part of the conversation you know like i mean it's an education process with with crypto right Ev everywhere like i read something funny about jeff bezos raising money for amazon in the early days and mm -hmm. the question he got asked the most is what is the internet and wow. you know the, anybody who's doing anything in like you know crypto ha you know when you're touching the real world which which we are everybody asks about blockchain everybody has their preconceived ideas And, you know, we, we definitely decided that insurance is crucial for what, for what we're doing. And so mm -hmm. we looked around for a few different insurance companies and the, the best, like the most open-minded was Lloyd's of London. And mm -hmm. it's funny because it's the, it's the world's oldest insurance market. You know, it's famous for like, you know, insuring like, you know, ships and things like that or, but it's very used to like, it's very used to looking at like, you know, non-standard things like, you know, like, I, I, you know, I mean, 
you know, David Beckham got his legs insured there, you know, and like people get their voice insured. So I kind of, I said, I've, I, so when we showed up there, like an old friend of mine, um, Simon, who's now our head of insurance, he helped us navigate this market. And I said, I, I've got something that's a bit strange to kind of explain to people. And he's like, you've come to the right place, <laughs> you know? So, you know, yeah. So, expl- you know, the, the amazing thing is, is that, I mean, I was just shocked. I mean, I started my career in London, n- not far from Lloyd's and like, everybody's like, you know, wearing like, you know, suits and ties. And I thought, I don't know how this crypto thing's going to go over. And they were amazingly receptive to it. I mean, it was really incredible. They were like, oh, okay, so I see that if you, if you use crypto, if you use your smart contracts, you, you're cutting out the biggest issue here, which is, which is disputes. And the second biggest issue is fraud because, mm-hmm. you know, many people show up and say, hey, I just sold a bunch of chocolate to the supermarket. Do you want to, you know, do you want to finance it? And like, you know, I mean, the difference is, is that if you produce the invoice yourself and it comes from essentially what's registered on chain and the seller and the buyer have agreed that what's registered on chain is, is the truth. I mean, I mean, Lloyd's was really excited about it because Mm -hmm. a lot of people show up there and want to ensure, you know, like some industrial facility that they're building in some, you know, you know, whatever difficult country. And, you know, there's actually a decent chance that like, that there might be an insurance claim. Whereas for us, it's like, we're only dealing with investment grade, you know, credits. It's, you know, this, the smart contract, our proof of delivery technology cuts out like a lot of the risk of like this, not, you know, this, this not paying and, and there having to be a claim. And so I think they really like it. So, mm. because it's not, it's, it's like a new line of business for them. One of the most amazing things about crypto is it creates new business opportunities. So mm. they were like, this is, this is pretty interesting. So, nice. yeah, so it's all insured. It's, it's, it's completely insured in, in Lloyd's. So. Um, yeah. So maybe you made them see that blockchain actually makes it work easier for them. <laughs> maybe they'll start exploring more blockchain opportunities. Well, you know, Camilla, the thing is, is like, you know, too much in crypto, we focus on the back end, and because many people are very, very technical and, mm. You know, that's what we're really, really interested in. You get all this tribal warfare about my blockchain versus your blockchain. And like, you know, I mean, whereas in the in the traditional world, I mean, for most users, they they just care about the benefits to them. Right. I mean, human beings are selfish Mm -hmm. and they're and they're they're pressed for time. They're not going to go in and like read your really, really detailed, like, you know, white paper about, you know, what they really care is, is like, you know, what's in it for me. And so. For us, an insured savings account, I mean, finance is about risk and return. So it's like, you know, it's like 3% insured. That's it. I mean, you can you go and talk about the back end. Like you and I are having, like, I'm really excited about it. I love these conversations because I can talk about, like, how we do it, how the, how the company works, et cetera. But most people are like, okay, it's 3% in U.S. dollars. It's completely insured by Lloyd's. I look That's at the, all you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I <laughs> yeah. have a, my business part. My business partner is his PhD in structural engineering, and he's mm-hmm. like, he's so into all these details. And finally, he turned to me in like some of these meetings that we're having, and he's like, he's like, he's like, you know, look, Robert, like, stop going into these. Stop saying crypto, blockchain. You know, getting into it. Like, he's like, just tell them it's three percent insured. And finally, people are like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. Like. Like, it's like watching Netflix. Like, nobody thinks of streaming packets and, you know, the transport layer. And, mm-hmm. you, you know, people just want to be entertained, right? So it's like, you, you know, it's, it's, it's the front end. It's the UI, mm-hmm. UX that is, it's the benefits to users that really is the most important part. Yeah, so. yeah. And, uh, like, as you said, once you start using this stuff, you, re- you realize how much better it is than traditional banking. And, and to me, it's just like, okay... Um, it's it's a matter of of when, not not if people will start using DeFi more. Um, I think that's right because if you could give people a taste test, you know, like a Coke Pepsi taste test, if you could mm-hmm. sit down and say, "Here's your existing financial system," you know, and here's like the UI UX, here's like mm-hmm. the KYC, here's all the you know complexities to it, and then here's you know here's what it looks like if you use like Bitcoin or Ethereum or some DeFi project, like 
you know, 99 out of a hundred people are going to be like, Oh my God, this is so amazing. Like yeah. I'm not going back to like, <laughs> you know, banking at Wells Fargo or something. So. Of course. Um, totally. So, okay. And now I wanted to get into your, um, your equity offering or, uh, tokenized equity whatever <laughs> can yeah. you can you explain exactly what was going on there well i'd like i'd like to i'm not i'm not 100 sure we we started off like it's well what we've done is, is the we've offered equity tokens in in crypto so it's a one-to-one -one match with the the shares of with the shares of our company the swiss regulated company so I don't understand a lot of the tokens that are out there, to be honest. I don't really understand utility tokens, governance tokens. I think a lot of it is because of the regulatory system. Like the, the regulatory system exists to protect people. I, 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 really under, I really understand that. However, it also exists to like, you know, protect the incumbents from competition. And it's the same thing with KYC and whatever. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a valuable thing. You need to do it, but you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a real disincentive to innovation. Uh, ours is very simple. It's just, it's just tokenized equity. It's like, it's like buying, you know, it's like buying a, a tokenized version of like Apple or Tesla or, or something like that. And okay. what, what we really did, Camilla, is we, we really wanted to develop a community. So we didn't, you know, Derek and I didn't take any money. We developed this all ourselves. We, we paid for everything ourselves. And we thought like, we're not beholden to anybody now. So what we'll try and do is we'll try and create a, a community who really believes in this, who, who, who really believes that there's a better banking model that, you know, people deserve to have their money work harder for them rather than, rather than for the bank. And so we wanted to distribute as many tokens as we could, like as many shares, basically, at, at, a, at a low price that was kind of fair. I mean, people talk about fair distribution. So you know, our, our first thought is Uniswap because it's kind of the reference in, in the space. And then some of our, we've got some really cool advisors and some of the advisors said, no, it's because of the AMM price curve. Um, it's, you, you're going to have, you know, the, the price is going to skyrocket and you're not going to distribute as many tokens as you probably want to create an early community. So, so we came up with like kind of a novel idea and my partner, Derek has, has just written about it in, in medium. Mm -hmm. So, we went first to the Dodo exchange, which is because we fell in love with kind of their PMM algorithm, which basically replicates an order book on chain. So it means that the, basically it means the price curve moves uh, with, the, with the price. So, so it doesn't skyrocket. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Balancer and we did a, a, an LBP, a liquidity bootstrapping pool on Balancer, which is a declining, which essentially it's like a declining auction or a Dutch auction mechanism. So it starts higher and goes down. Mm -hmm. And in both those cases, the idea is, is that the community wins and bots lose. Mm -hmm. So, but it was pretty, it was pretty complicated. So, and then after, you know, and so we, we did it, Camilla, and like, it's like, you know, you open, we're, we're really excited to have our community, but it was like endless questions of when are you going to Uniswap and why did you do this? And like, it was like, you know, I mean, you know, Mar, we, this telegram, we're, we're, you know, we're a bit naive. We didn't set up a telegram channel first. So the community set up a telegram channel for us. I mean, that's why I love crypto. It's so amazing. It's such a refreshing change from, from traditional finances. It's like, you know, it's like, people are cooperative. It's, it's really <laughs> incredible. I mean, so people helped us and set things up. They set up a telegram. I mean, and then the telegram filled with these green frogs. And then um, <laughs> it was a real mystery to me. <laughs> and then, wow. you know, you should have told me that we were friends. And then so, and then, you know, the price feeds from the different pools that go to um, CoinGecko Mm -hmm. um, dropped like a number of times. So like they just disappeared. So the price on CoinGecko went to zero and it, it, it filled, it littered my DMs with images of rugs and death threats. And oh my stuff. God. But I'm like, you know, and then it, thank God it came back. Like it came back rapidly and CoinGecko was amazing. Like I was trying to figure out how to get it quoted on CoinGecko and they listed, they listed the tokens within 37 minutes. Amazing. of us starting it's it's just incredible like i i didn't like i mean i was going to fill in some form and they contacted us and got it up and running it's amazing but the, the the price feeds did drop like 
momentarily and it's like it's like heart stopping because like people are like oh my god you've <laughs> you've done a rug pull so i figured out yes. what a rug pull was i figured out what these green frogs are and like anyway we went yes finally yesterday we went to uniswap we created quite a large pool it's like about um two million dollars and uh we're really excited you know because the whole process was a lot longer than it would have been if we had just gone straight to uniswap but we ended up distributing 630 thousand tokens and um, essentially equity shares in our company at an average price of three dollars mm -hmm. and had we done that on uniswap it would have been half that amount and the price would have been forty dollars on average so yeah so we're really excited we've got like a small you know small but you know kind of passionate community which i'm really excited about and we're going to try and use that community from all over the world to to help us you know, encourage people to use our to use our product when when we roll out our our product to retail and in stable coins next year. Very cool. Okay, so for for this token offering, you, you use you basically did two separate ones, like one on Dodo and the other one on Balancer. Yeah. So we did Dodo. We did Dodo first, and then we went to Balancer, and then we went to Uniswap. I, I don't know if I'd do it again. You know, my hair is a lot grayer than it was two weeks ago. So. That's a <laughs> lot. Wow. Um, but it, it, it was a really fair, you know, it was, it, like I said, like it, it helped us get out 630,000 shares tokens at like a much lower price than if we had just done it on Uniswap. And that's what we wanted to do. So it was, it was worth it. Distributed in uh, among how many holders? There's more holders than there are people in our Telegram. So we're just starting. There's like 1,500, uh, there's 1,500 holders the last time I looked at it. So. Wow. And it's just under that in the telegram. So what's what's the ticker for for your token? It's W Crez, W C R E S. Oh, so okay, yeah. it's yeah. really cool. We've used this we've used this really cool um, open source software for tokenizing the shares. And so it's called the C layer standard. It's under MIT license and it exactly replicates Swiss law. So it's like it's developed by developed by a Swiss guy who like works with us in Geneva. This really cool guy, um, Cyril Lepind, and w what it does is it, it it's exactly like Swiss law. So the wrapped the wrapped version is like a share of Nestle or any other Swiss company that you might buy on an exchange or OTC, and anybody can buy it. Any you know you can buy sell you can do you can you know you can do whatever, and then. If you want to register to vote or to eventually in the future to receive uh, dividends, then you have to unwrap it and you and you get a CREZ uh, token. So there's there's only one unit, like one equity unit, uh, which is CREZ, and it's just like some of them some of them we've wrapped. We've wrapped about 15 15 percent of the supply is wrapped and is is available to be is available to be purchased. But then if you if you want to be if you want to be entered in the company's books to, to vote and like be officially in the shareholder registry, then you have to do KYC. And so the KYC is very simple. The Swiss have a very common sense approach to KYC. It's your name, your address. We verify that you're not on some uh, sanctions list uh, from the Swiss government. And if you're not, then you're automatically a shareholder. Oh, cool. Okay, so um, did you so did you issue uh, like equity just like shares on Cresco first, like so you issued six hundred and thirty thousand Cresco share, shares. Well, we issued we issued a bit we've issued a bit more than that because we put one point seven we put one point seven uh, million. It's just not all of them have been sold, so they still exist. They still exist on the exchange on like okay. you know on yeah they're still out there on the exchange. We have some as well that we're holding back because we're um, we're kind of looking for partners. I mean, we're kind of looking for because we didn't do the we didn't do the standard route, you know. I mean, we're and we're not crypto natives, so we didn't take VC money. Um, we we went straight to kind of trying to build a, a a community. So yeah, so the the yeah the shares all the shares are tokenized. It's not just a portion of them. We've tokenized all of the shares. There's 12 million shares in total, and we've called uh, finished minting, which which means that we can't we can't mint any more shares. I mean, we've we've moved a bunch of control from the team to a voting contract, mm -hmm. 
Um, but neither the team nor the voting contract can mint any more shares. There's like a, there's a hard, hard cap. There'll never, ever be more than 12 million shares. And about, you know, about 15% are, are wrapped and, and are traded. And, and they're wrapped in like a way that really optimizes for, for gas costs. Cause like, you know, like, you know, whatever <laughs> gas is expensive yeah. today. So, yeah. Okay. So you, you issued, um, uh, you said, uh, Sorry. So there were on, only 12 million shares. You issued um, a, a, a percentage of that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a percentage of that are uh, wrapped tokens that can be traded freely in, in decentralized exchanges. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's about 15%, there's about 15% that, is, that is wrapped. Mm -hmm. and, of, and of those, uh, of that, like, a little bit over the majority is actually like is actually trade is actually traded and the rest okay. we the rest we have we have wrapped but we're going to use it either to um to bring in some partners or we're going to use it for some other to incentivize employees or or whatever but there's um yeah there's like about 15% is the total amount that can be in circulating in circulating supply and then The rest is like, you know, we started off like my partner and I started off with like 100% of the company because mm -hmm. we created it like a year and a half ago and got it regulated. And, and actually in the beginning, we, we weren't really even think we, we never were thinking of issuing, you know, tokens in DeFi. It never, mm -hmm. never crossed our mind. We were just kind of annoyed with not making anything in the bank and mm -hmm. we wanted an alternative. And so it's it's been quite a journey for the last, you know, last year and a half. It's been a long learning experience. But Uh, all of our, like a hundred percent of our team tokens are all locked up for up to two years. So. Cool. And so what percentage of tokens uh, does the team own? The team owns, roughly the team owns 15% mm -hmm. and there's 15% in the market and there's 15% that are still left for the founders. So we're, we're trying to decide what to do with it. I, I know there's this kind of idea that, you know, with some tokens, you just, you just, create them and uh, you get together and you get an idea. I mean, with us, we, we approached it in kind of an old fashioned way, right? Like mm -hmm. we just created a company and the two of us, uh, you know, the two of us, you know, put our own money into it and financed it and built out the software and got it regulated mm -hmm. and hired a team and stuff. So we, we have probably more, you know, more tokens as founders than is, that is typical in, in crypto. I mean, but it's pretty normal in the real world and they're all locked up and, We're, we're trying to think of some way to we're trying to think of some way to move to like a you know whatever more of a community governance um, thing but it's just you know it's uh, it's step by step so yeah of course and I, I think you know there are different models of, of building uh, businesses and companies and projects or platforms you know in in DeFi so yeah um, I love you know I love you know Uniswap which is a permissionless mm -hmm. smart contract running on Ethereum that's amazing right yeah. but It just doesn't work with our model. Like we're we're trying mm -hmm. to compete with like, you know, core deposit banking globally, mm -hmm. and it's like it's it's a really it's a really tough challenge. I mean, yeah. so but you need like, you you still do need people kind of to to oversee that and to make it work at the moment. Increasingly, we're we're trying to automate it, like with the smart car, whatever. But you know, like there's a funny quote at the this this you know amazing like older British guy in like the Lloyd's Market. He said, you know he wanted to go for a drink and he said, I never sign an insurance contract with anybody, you know, that I haven't had a drink down in the pub with, you know? And so like you, obviously you can't get the smart contract to have a drink down in the pub with, you know, with some right. insurance guys. So yeah. we'll, we'll get there one day, but it's uh, step by step. So for sure. And um, it, this is a really interesting solution that you came up with uh, to tokenize equity and, and still have it be kind of freely traded because I think that's kind of the the main question mark of like how how do you do that and have it kind of still interact with with DeFi if it needs to go through KYC. So um, I think this is a cool solution to kind of wrap it um, and ha have like a different uh, sort of token, and then you need to go through that kind of KYC process to to actually convert to 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 equity itself. So. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, they're they're both essentially like an equity claim on the company. So you mm. can do like a you can do a standard valuation model, like you know from your time at Bloomberg. It's like you know you do a DCF or you do a 
multiples comparison model to kind of work out the the value of it. But mm. it it really exactly matches uh, Swiss law. So if you mm. want to buy a share of some Swiss company, you can you can do that, and it's not a you're not registered as a shareholder until you actually go to the company and say, hey, I just bought you know your share on the market mm. or or peer to peer, and it's called OTC in the mm-hmm. in TradFi, and then. You know, and the company says, okay, who are you? And you write down, you know, you have to like whatever, get your name inscribed in the book. And and it's really, Switzerland's really great because it's very supportive of crypto. Like I feel mm-hmm. badly for some of our friends in the UK and the in the US where, you know, you, you've got some amazing crypto development, but it's like, you know, the regulations are just not very clear. And it, yeah. here in Switzerland, it's 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 really clear. So we were we're very fortunate. We're a regulated company. And we were, and so we were able to offer these, you know, offer like equity in a very honest, like you know, way that works with that works with Swiss law. So, I, I think the C layer standard is is pretty cool for wrapping equity, and you know, hopefully mm-hmm. it'll be accepted in in other jurisdictions. Yeah, very cool. Um, so, with these wrap wrap tokens, um, do you have? I mean, can you get dividends uh, th- through those still? Yeah, the idea. So the idea of the it's 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 a share. So it's like you know, like I said, it's like Tesla, Apple, whatever. I mean, and you know, to receive the dividend officially under Swiss law today, you you have to be registered in the shareholders registry. So oh, okay. Swiss law hasn't caught up yet with, you know, just pushing dividend payments, you know, to chain, which is mm-hmm. what we want to do. Swiss law is moving in that direction. So. You know, my guess, Camilla, is, is that in the future, like I don't know if it's six months or two years, but the in the relatively foreseeable future, I think Swiss companies will be able to push dividends um, just to just to Ethereum addresses. Wow. That's, but today, today, no. Like today, mm-hmm. it's still like you know. I mean, Switzerland's very advanced in many ways for crypto, but but for dividends, it's still treated as you have to be an official. You know, official shareholder, but you know, we're, we're in a growth. We're in a growth phase. Like we're raising money, so we're not we're not paying dividends immediately. So, mm-hmm. um, but you know, we we definitely want to. The one of the nice things about finance is it's it's quite lucrative. Like even if you, even if like us, you're cutting out the bank, you're paying a lot to savers. Like uh, our our margins are are really pretty attractive. I mean, you realize how profitable banks are, right? That you know, mm-hmm. here we are trying to give a. You know, a great deal to the the seller, the buyer, to the depositor, and you know, still we have a high margin. So, mm-hmm. uh, eventually, once we're done our once we done our build out, which you know we hope to do by the middle of next year, uh, we'll turn our attention to dividends, and that'll either be people need to register, like basically you easily you can easily swap between the wrapped equity and the equity. So you can just swap. You can then vote, and you can receive dividends. You can go back to wrapping it again if you want to trade it. So. Mm. Um, yeah, th- this is a, a really cool kind of fluid system between equity and, and tokens that you don't see very often. It's really interesting. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. What, what we're trying to, you know, it's a tough task to like compete with banks. Mm. And it's also like bridging like, you know, traditional finance and crypto is also like, you know, it's really exhilarating, mm. you know, but it raises, but there's also lots of things that are like, you know, it, it's a challenge. It's the early, it's the earlier days, but so many people like giants have gone before us and like, you see much more acceptance of like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, like those are pretty, those are pretty mainstays today, you know, and particularly in Switzerland. Like, I mean, Bitcoin's widely accepted, right? You can pay your taxes in some places in in Bitcoin, like in in Zug and Chiasso. You can, you know, you can, you know, there's a little Thai restaurant behind our where our our office is in the old town of Geneva. And if you walk through one of the little alleyways to this, you know, great little Thai place, I mean, you can pay. They take like Litecoin. They take you know Bitcoin Cash. They take Bitcoin. I mean, it's really. It's it's just a crypto. It's a pretty crypto friendly place. So, nice. but it, it raises lots of funny things though, like trying to go from traditional finance to, to to crypto because traditional people ask, like they say, what what are you trying to do? And we say, like, well, we're trying to replace you know banking with code. And some people say, like, you know, come on, like, what are you what are you guys thinking? Like, you're in Switzerland. Like, I mean, it's a land of banks. You're not going to have any <laughs> friends left if you replace banks with code. It's like attacking chocolate, right? It's like, so there's lots of, you know, there's lots of amusing things about it. But at, at the end, it's 
it's the user benefits I think that people care about. They don't care about so much that, you know, that the infrastructure is crypto. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, and then the other piece um, is the the other uh, market uh, place that you want that you were talking about. How how are you thinking of integrating with Ave? Well, it's our so that'll be our first big move into crypto. So mm -hmm. essentially, like I said, the way we the way we essentially make our money is by having an asset, and then that asset is insured. And so that's like a million times better than just having a promise to repay because we actually mm -hmm. own that asset. So then it's a question of uh, how do we, where do we place it? So you know we have a list of people today who are interested in being our you know savings partners in Switzerland because you know we we pay you know in Swiss francs we pay one percent and. Mm -hmm. If you're a large holder, you actually pay 75 basis points to have your, you know, to have your money in a bank. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's just it, for me, I'm kind of agnostic whether it's in, you know, in fiat or, or or crypto. I mean, so we're trying to bring essentially our, you know, insured regulated asset uh, to crypto. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think Aave, Aave is incredible. I mean, it's like I, I it's. You know, I don't know all the different protocols, but it's, you know, it's for sure one of my, you know, favorite protocols. And mm -hmm. we're really blessed that like Stani is on our board of advisors and he's mm -hmm. been, you know, he's been incredible. So we have a, we've worked on it for a while. We have a, we have a formal proposal in their governance forum. You know, like Stani has done himself out of a job. He's given over the admin keys to the community. So mm -hmm. it's up to the community to vote. Um, we're securing that data on chain using uh, Chainlink, and so Chainlink does proof of reserves for us, so that like, you know, you can see on chain essentially what we've got off chain, which is like the assets that back uh, the collateral. Mm -hmm. And so the way it will work is people will be able to send in like USD USDC, and they get in return they get like uh, they get this little token indicating that they have. Uh, insured collateral on Aave, and it pays the same. It pays three percent in in U.S. dollars. I mean, mm. it, not, or not in U.S. dollars in USDC. You know, so right. it, it it's funny because like in the traditional space, I say that I pay three percent in U.S. dollars, and people are like beside like treasurers are beside themselves excited to have like that, and it's insured, right? And in crypto, I say I pay three percent. Insured people are like three percent. That's nothing. Come on, I can make like. So it's it's bridging those two worlds. That's mm -hmm. a real. That's that's a that's that's a bit of a challenge. So, with Ave, it will be our first move into into crypto, and it's been a, you know, it's it's been a long learning process for you know for for Derek and I. I mean, it's been like you know all autumn we've been working on, you know, tokenizing our shares. We thought we would have had this done in September. It's taken a lot longer. I mean, you know, because you can imagine, like, we're regulated. We have to go to the lawyers. We need to go to the mm -hmm. regulators to make sure it all works. And then, you know, we bit off a lot going to three different um, exchanges. So, yeah. but anyway, we're 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 making some progress, and we're really excited to do the insured collateral money market on Ave probably in Q1 next year. Oh yeah, that'll be exciting to have more uh, retail users of, of your product on, on Ave and and more like a permissionless uh, uh, product as well. That'll be exciting to see. Yeah, we're really excited about it. You know, I, you know, you know what's an amazing thing is is that our regulator is just down the street here mm -hmm. in Geneva, and they have like a crypt they have like a, a crypto specialist for the mm -hmm. regulator, and so I can actually go see my regulator and talk about like, hey, we're going to build like a you know, regulated, insured money market on top of Aave and the guy gets it. Like he knows what Aave is wow. and he understands that, okay, well, you know, it's going to, you're going to have to do KYC. How are you going to do it? And yeah, I mean, the guy, he's actually like a, I think he's a bit of a link Marine as well. He's like really <laughs> keen on like chain link. It's really kind of, it's really wow. kind of funny. You know, it's like the world is slow and the world is slowly really catching on to crypto. I think I think uh, 2021 is going to be like huge adoption for crypto. I mean you're seeing it in the in the price, you know, today you see more and more people moving into it, but it, it's just becoming a it's just becoming a lot more mainstream. So Yeah, no. Um I agree. The, the price is certainly reflecting that. And what a luxury to have um, a, a chain link marine as your regulator. <laughs> I know it's really it's really funny. It's really and we've got like our my uh, this young woman who runs like social media for us, Elsa. She's also like 
she's a, she's also like a link marine you know i'm like i deal with chain link all the time and i like you know they're an incredible company and we have a really symbiotic kind of relationship with them because we have so much data through our supply chains mm. uh, that Chainlink could put on chain. Like Chainlink is just touching the, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's so much rich data that, you know, that even just we have, I mean, mm -hmm. from how we do our, you know, proof of delivery smart chain mechanisms. So, yeah, so it's, it's actually, it's refreshing to be here in Switzerland. It's kind of, it's kind of sad to see like in the US and like, you know, the UK and some other places that are, you know, that are, that are not quite as crypto friendly. So. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, to wrap up, um, what, like, where do you expect to, to, to be, or how, where do you ex expect Cresco to be at this time next year? Well, it's a good question. You know, I mean, it, I'm, I'm being really honest with everybody and setting expectations. Like it's a tough fight against banks. We're looking for partners We went to crypto for the community and uh, we've developed an amazing community who I hope are going to help us as, you know, like you say, we roll out to, to retail. You know, my, you know, the, the, one of the quotes that really keeps me going is, is from Damien Horner at, uh, he's a co-founder at Real Vision who helped us with some of our marketing, which we haven't really started yet, but I mean, we've done some basics and, you know, he put out some nice, nice comment where he's like working with Cresco. It's kind of like, It's kind of like maybe Amazon was in the early days before anybody knew who they were because the potential is enormous. Like, it, again, it's a really boring business. I mean, like I'm boring, it's regulated, it's here in Switzerland. It's like, we're, but we're, we're competing with core deposit banking. And, you know, like we talked about for a taste test, like if you sat somebody down and said, you know, here's what banking looks like in on, on a traditional tech stack. And here's what it looks like on a, blockchain tech stack you just you you get so much more for your money it's so much it's so much easier I, i think it's so much better for for the world so yeah we're you know it's a it's an enormous market and that's what we're and that's what we're going to try and capture so it's really you know it's it's really trying to change how people bank and it kind of started with you know a little bit with my thought piece which i wrote in the defiant last uh, uh august about You know, what do you need to compete with banks? And I think, you know, Bill Gates calling them dinosaurs on a technology side, for sure they're dinosaurs. I, I think the missing piece is insurance. And I think for crypto, it needs to be coming from a regulated company. So our mm -hmm. idea of essentially matched funding plus blockchain technology plus, you know, insurance, we, we hope that leads to mass, mass adoption, but, awesome. but you never know. So. Insurance is a meteor. <laughs> that's the media that's right you can that was your that was what you came up with i like that that's great that's what's needed to make banking dinosaurs uh, extinct. you know extinct yeah awesome well robert it was a pleasure having you on such an interesting conversation um yeah, i'll be really so nice. looking forward to everything that that's coming up with cresco yeah thanks camilla it was so great chatting with you